Hello students, in this video I will go through exercise U5A05B where I will be solving for sides of triangles that are 30, 60, 90 or 45, 45, 90 using sine, cosine and tangent ratios. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to go through just the even questions just because if I, if I don't, if I go through all of them, this video will end up being like almost an hour long. So, uh, so I'm just going to go through the even questions here and um, the uh, the concept okay that you have to have is this you should have this chart next to you okay as you are attempting these problems and that is 30 45 and 60 for sine cosine and tangent of theta so sine of 30 is 1 half cosine 45 is radical 2 over 2 Sine of 60 is radical 3 over 2. Uh, cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2. Uh, 45 is radical 2 over 2. And 60 is 1 half. Tangent of 30 is radical 3 over 3. 45 is 1. Tangent of 60 is radical 3 over... Uh, radical 3. What am I saying? Okay. So, with that said, now we can find... Now we can stop, figure out what x and y is. Okay? Using the sine, cosine, tangent ratios. So I know that y is opposite of 60 and 3 radical 3 is adjacent to, so I'm going to use tangent of 60 is equal to y over 3 radical 3. And I understand that tangent of 60 is equal to radical 3, so therefore y must equal to 3 times 3 radical, th 3, radical 3 times radical 3, which is simply equal to 9. So y is equal to 9. And now I've got to find out what x is. So uh, I know that x is the hypotenuse, so I can say cosine of 60, because 3 radical 3 is adjacent to 60. So 3 radical 3 over x. And I know that cosine of 60 is equal to 1 half, so therefore if I cross multiply, I'll end up with x is equal to 6 radical 3. Okay. Uh, next, something very similar. So I can say tangent of 60 is equal to y over 2 radical 3. Tangent of 60 is equal to radical 3. So therefore, y must equal to 6. Solving for x, um, I, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I want to say sine of 60 is equal to y over x, and having just solved for y, I can then say this is equal to, um, I can say 6 over x is equal to radical 3 over 2. Let's solve for x. So I'm going to cross multiply, I end up with uh, 12 is equal to x radical 3, or simply x is equal to 12 over radical 3, but I got to rationalize, so x will equal to 12 radical 3 over 3, or 4 radical 3 is equal to x. Again, when I rationalize 12 radical th over radical 3, I multiply top and bottom by radical 3, so I end with 12 radical 3 over 3, and that's how I simplify to 4 radical 3 there. All right? Okay, solving for a and b, what do I have? Uh, so... I can then say sine of 45 is equal to b over radical 2. I'm sorry. I used the wrong ratio there. Tangent of 45 is equal to b over radical 2 because b is opposite of 45 and radical 2 is adjacent to 45. So I know that this is equal to 1. So therefore, b is equal to radical 2. And I can then say cosine of 45 is equal to radical 2 over A. And cosine 45 is radical 2 over 2, making A must therefore equal to 2. All right, again, I'm going to solve for x and y using sine, cosine, and tangent. So I know that sine of 45 is equal to x over 4. Sine 45 is equal to radical 2 over 2. 
I can then solve for x by multiplying both sides by 4. I end up with x is equal to 2 radical 2. And I can do something very similar. Uh, I can say tangent of 45 is equal to x over y, which is equal to 1. Having solved for x already, I already know that y will therefore equal to 2 radical 2. This is, so now I have a composition of triangles here. I want to call this side here length n. So I can say that, uh, I can say sine of 45 is equal to n over 9, which is equal to radical 2 over 2, which then n is equal to 9 radical 2 over 2. And then to solve for x, I can say x over n is equal to sine 45 again, which is equal to radical 2 over 2. And since I have n, I can multiply both sides by n to say x is equal to n radical 2 over 2. I replace what n is in there, so I will get, end up with x is equal to 9 radical 2 over 2 times radical 2 over 2, or simply this is going to equal to 9 halves. So x is equal to 9 halves. Solving for question 12, very similarly, I'm going to um, put in a dummy variable here to help me with the transition to get to the unknown x. So I'm going to call that side there n. So I know that 5 is a hypotenuse and n is going to be opposite of 45. Therefore, I will use sine of 45 is equal to n over 5. And sine 45 is radical 2 over 2. So therefore, n will equal to 5 radical 2 over 2. And then solving for x, I can then say x over n is equal to, again, cosine of 45, because x is adjacent to the 45 degree angle that's given. And cosine of 45, once again, is equal to radical 2 over 2. I'm going to multiply both sides by n. x is equal to n radical 2 over 2. I'm going to replace what n is. So that's 5 radical 2 over 2 times radical 2 over 2, which then gives me 5 halves as x. All right, so I will now solve for, again, the even questions here. Uh, Looking at this, I will need to use, I need to find that length to then help me lead to the unknown x. So I'm going to solve for n first. So I know that n is opposite of 60 degrees, so I'm going to call sine, or actually not sine, but tangent of 60 is equal to n over 6, because 6 is adjacent to 60, and n is opposite of 60. Tangent of 60 degrees is radical 3. Multiplying both sides by 6, I end up with n is equal to 6 radical 3. Now that I have n is equal to 6 radical 3, and looking at the bigger triangle, n is adjacent to 60, and x is the hypotenuse, I can use cosine. Cosine of 60 will equal to n over x. Cosine of 60 is equal to 1 half. I want to try to solve for x. x will equal to 2n. So replacing what n is, since n is equal to 6 radical 3, I will then be able to s declare that x is equal to 12 radical 3. Question 16. So again, I need to have a transition going from the one triangle over to another to lead to the unknown x. I want to give that side there, call that side n. n is again opposite of 60. So I want to say uh, sine of 60 is equal to n over 10. Sine 60 is equal to radical 3 over 2, thereby n is equal to 5 radical 3. Since n is equal to 5 radical 3 and x is opposite of 60, I can then say, again, sine of 60 is equal to x over n. And since sine of 60, again, is radical 3 over 2, I can then solve for x. x is n radical 3 over 2. Replacing what n is, I have 5 radical 3 
times radical 3 over 2, x will end up equaling to 15 halves. Solving for question 18. So again, the dummy variable, I'm going to call that n. So 7 is adjacent to 60, and n is the hypotenuse. So therefore, I'm going to use cosine. Cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 7 over n. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. Therefore, n is equal to 14. Since n is equal to 14, I can then solve for x now. Since n is opposite of 45, I'm going to use sine. So n over x, opposite over hypotenuse, is equal to sine 45. Sine 45 is radical 2 over 2. Replacing what n is, 14 over x is equal to radical 2 over 2. I end up with 28 is equal to x radical 2. Divide both sides by radical 2. I end up with x is equal to 28 over radical 2. Rationalize, leaving me with x is equal to 14 radical 2. Again, how do you rationalize? You multiply both the numerator and denominator by what the denominator is equal to, thereby turning the denominator into a rational number, and thereby reducing to 14 radical 2 there. And then the last question, question number 20, I want to call this side here n to get to that unknown x over there. I want to call figure out n by using sine of 45 is equal to n over 9 radical 6. Sine 45 is equal to radical 2 over 2. n, therefore, is equal to 9 radical 6 times radical 2 over 2. 9 radical 6 ra times radical 2 is 9 radical 12 over 2. Radical 12 may be reduced to become 18 radical 3 over 2, which then further reduces to 9 radical 3. Now that I know n is equal to 9 radical 3, I may apply the sine ratio, sine of 60, is equal to x over n. Sine of 60 is radical 3 over 2. x therefore is equal to n radical 3 over 2. Replacing what n is, x will equal to 9 radical 3 times radical 3 over 2, which the final answer will turn out to be 27 halves. So x is equal to 27 halves.